What's going on guys and welcome to today's video and today we are starting out in front of mom and dad's house with mom's new to her Jeep Wrangler JK Unlimited because we're going to be doing a little bit of testing before we do our install today. Now today we are going to be installing a hardtop headliner kit. Um, now there are a ton of options out there online. There are cheap ones on eBay. There are expensive Hotheads brand. There are Mopar. There there are just an absolute ton if you start doing research and for the most part they should all be very similar on construction on the yeah i ended up going with the mopar kit now once we get back to my place i will show you the part number at least for this four-door jk um but i thought we would at least do kind of some sort of testing other than just a install video of a hardtop headliner so i've got a um, decibel meter app that I've downloaded on my phone that we are going to drive down the highway to my place while recording our sound levels. We're going to install this hardtop headliner and then drive back to bring it back here to mom. And I have no idea, honestly, if we are going to see any conclusive results on this. Are we going to see any measurable amount of noise reduction? I really don't know. So this might be a complete waste of time, at least my whole decibel meter thing. Now, there are some other benefits of hardtop headliners. They are supposedly decent for insulation. It is a um, little kind of foam insulated layer with the fabric material sewn onto it. So in theory, I mean, similar to a sunshade going on the windshield, you know, you've got a little bit of heat or um, keeping the heat in or out, depending on if it is summer or winter. Now we can't really test that. It's just, it is what it is today. But if nothing else, I wanted to check the noise um, or our decibel while we're driving because you do on a Wrangler have a decent amount of wind rush noise over the hardtop depending on any um, TJ, JK, JL. You're, you're just going to have it with a fiberglass hardtop on a vehicle. Um, so yeah, I'm going to strap you guys onto the window. I'm going to have my decibel meter app, which I'm sure is not terribly accurate, but we'll at least be using the same app <laughs> for the drive to and from. Um, get this thing installed and uh, see if we have any results. So I'm kind of actually interested to see if we have anything measurable. So I will get us uh, in the car or in the Jeep, I should say, and uh, we'll uh, see what we can do. All right, guys, so we are getting ready to get on the highway here. Um, so to make my to and from results as even as possible i've got the radio turned off i've got the blower on speed one with the air conditioning on so we're going to keep all of our settings the same so i'm not artificially making it look better or worse by having something on so um that's where we've got the settings um now again this does have all terrains on it so those would be a little bit louder than just normal street terrains but again all of that's going to be the same for this testing um but we'll be doing sec uh but we'll be doing 60 65 mile an hour down the highway here heading back to my place and um we're gonna see what what decibels we have here in the jeep now i did play with this on the way to pick this up with my WJ um, and my WJ doing 65 down the highway, I was right at 60 decibels of cabin noise with no radio on. So it will be interesting to compare this to that. And then again, once we get our headliner panels in to see if it does anything for us. All right guys, so holding the phone kind of up near my um, head where my ear height is, Looks like I'm averaging 57 decibels while driving, you know, kind of obviously moving around with the wind and stuff, maybe max of 59, but 56, 57, all kind of all around in there. Obviously now with me talking, um, we are a lot louder, but yes. Yeah, so it looks like roughly 57 um, average. All right guys, so we are back at the house now. And um, I, again, reset the decibel meter. We were 56 to 57 decibels on the way here. So that was kind of our final conclusion with the phone up to my ear and going down the highway. Um, so 
Now we are going to get this hardtop headliner installed. Now, like I said in the beginning of this video, there are a ton of different brands out there. Um, I am more familiar with the Mopar brand working at the shop where I do, but this is for a um, four-door JK, a what, 12 through 18, since they changed hardtops in like 2011 or 11 through 18. Um, but this is an 82, 21, 24, 64 AC. And again, that is just the Mopar um, hardtop headliner kit for this year. Now. Here are all of the panels that you get. You get the two front freedom panels. You get the rear um, panels that go uh, on the side windows, which is kind of cool. Some of the kits do not have that. So when you're looking online, make sure you get a kit that has the two rear window surrounds. And then we've got the two panels that go in the middle and then in the rear of the hardtop. Uh, now, at least with the Mopar, there is some double-sided tape. Now, I have seen A Mopar and B aftermarkets come into the shop with panels that have fallen down. Now, per the instructions, they want you to take isopropyl alcohol and clean all of these surfaces on the hardtop, and I absolutely recommend doing that. I need to do that before we stick these up, but if we look here on these panels, there is not that much double-sided tape installed um, to mount up to the hardtop. Now, I'm assuming this is enough to make the job done, and I think most of the ones that I've installed at the shop, I've used the supplied installed tape and not had any issues. But, since I am OCD and I want to make sure this never falls down for mom, I'm going to add way more. Now, what I've done, I've kind of held this up into place on the hardtop and then taken a Sharpie and marked where all of the hardtop ribs or runners are, and I'm going to add additional pieces of double-sided tape. So this thing is going to be on there forever. Um, I already did that with the top panels here. Um, again, all of the white double-sided tape is from the factory, and then I've added all this red. There's not that much on the front panels, but there is a large wide rib here. So we've got two more long pieces here on each of those freedom panels, and then if you can kind of see, there is some awkward gaps on these rear panels that go around the rear glass. So anywhere where, the, where I have added red, that's where they just stopped putting the double-sided tape from the factory. So kind of weird since there are just huge gaps. But again, hold them up first. Make sure that actually touches the hardtop and there's not a big indention where that tape's not going to actually do anything. So again, spend some time. I ran to Walmart, bought some double-sided tape just so I could add even more to this thing so I don't have any issues um, in the future with this. So I'm going to continue to doctor up all of my panels. And again, depending on the aftermarket hardtop headliner you're installing, you might not need to do this. Um, but again, hold it up. Make sure you don't need to just add some more to it to make the thing last for a long time. So I'm going to finish adding all of my tape. I'm going to grab some isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber and wipe all of the hardtop surfaces down, the perimeter, all of those where this double-sided tape is sticking, and then we will uh, get these panels up into place. All right, guys, so now that I've got my isopropyl alcohol, I've wiped all of the hardtop surfaces that I think will have tape, the perimeter, and then all of our support ribs um, going down the middle here. And I've got my rear panel here with all of my added double-sided tape and the factory tape. So I will get that all peeled off and then we will stick this thing into place and I will then work my way forward. All right, so with all of our tape peeled, we've got one chance <laughs> to get this thing positioned correctly. And then we will really try to mush down everywhere where there was tape. And just like that, we've got one of our panels installed. Now, I'm not going to film me installing all of these things, obviously, but you get the gist. Um, peel your tape, well, isopropyl alcohol, peel your tape, install them, press them into place really good, and uh, hope they stick. Now the instructions do want you to be between 60 and 100 and something degrees outside so that 
double sticky tape gets nice and pliable and hopefully has a better chance of sticking. Don't do this when it's 30 degrees outside. That tape is going to be very not sticky at the time. So like I said, I'm going to continue working all the way forward and then uh, we'll go out and drive this and hopefully get a little less noise. All right, guys, we've got all of the headliner panels installed, so we'll take a quick look and then go out and drive this thing and see if it makes any difference out on the noise level. So guys, starting at the back, you can see our rear panel. We've got that center panel, and then we've got the two front freedom panels, and then you've got the two side window surrounds here at the very back on the hardtop. Now, I don't know. To me, it just looks so much more finished or luxury or something. I don't know what word I'm trying to use, but it just looks finished or complete versus just that bare hard top. So we will go get this thing out on the road now and uh, see what our decibel meter says. All right, guys, so we're getting ready to come to the drastic conclusion here of our hard top headliner panels. I've got all of them in and we are getting ready to get on the highway here. So we will get up to speed here. I will turn on the decibel meter and we will see where we are at. We are going to set the cruise again to 63 miles an hour. And previously we were like 56 to 57 decibels and um, we will see where we are at now. All right, guys, so I'm seeing a bunch of 54 and 55 decibel readings here. Obviously, with wind, with everything else, it's kind of jumping around. I did even flip around on the highway to drive the same way, even though we have very little to no wind here today. So a couple of decibels, one to two decibels is not a lot of change. Um, <laughs> so like I said at the beginning, I'm not really sure if we were going to see much change. And two decibels is not very much um, but you know again some of what these panels are are marketed as is heat or cold insulation in the hot in the summer um, your AC or heat may be a little more efficient since you've got another layer where that hard top is basically single layer anywhere where those panels are going it is making a second layer um, everywhere else is kind of you know at least another pane or panel um, so yes you are adding some insulation again heating cooling should be again slightly better maybe maybe a little less affected with outside temperature but at the end of the day <laughs> I kind of like how they look. I think they look more finished. I think it looks a little more refined. Um, and again, yes, I know it's a Jeep Wrangler, but you can still have it look nice inside and out. So uh, yeah, that's just one of the things that I like on JKs and JLs is the headliner kit. So it's just another thing we're doing on mom's Jeep Wrangler JK to make it look and drive a little bit nicer down the road, guys. So hopefully this was some interesting or not interesting results since we didn't really change too much noise here on the JK on the interior but guys again at the end of the day I like how they look and that's kind of why I installed it here today so until next time um, I'd like to get our bumper cut I'd like to get our heated seats done I'd like to get our uh, automatic high beams installed um, but that's going to have to wait until another day, and I'm hoping that'll wait until we are in the new house. Now, I'll probably close the video out here, but if you want to stick around, I am going to be going by the house to drop this thing back off, and I will give you guys a quick little home update if you're a regular viewer here on the channel and are actually interested in that, guys. So, if you're clicking off here, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time. But if you're sticking around to see the house update, just keep watching and it'll happen now. All right, guys, so a little house update here before it gets too dark. Um, we do have some actual progress on the outside. We've got a formed up driveway finally, and it, it, and it does have a circle drive. So it cuts through there and then exits over there on the street. Now here over in her garage, um, it is all painted now. Um, I don't know, I can throw a little bit of footage here of me getting ready to paint the garage. 
Well guys, I don't really know where this is going to end up in a random video. Um, I'm envisioning this video being installing lighting, installing my fan here in the new garage. But today, I am painting. Um, it's, ugh, it's quite a task. These are, I think, 16 foot ceilings in here. Um, and first things first is masking off those upper windows. So as you guys can see, my side does have five little, you know, windows way up high. Um, so had to crawl up there with a ladder and we've got plastic up and painter's tape so we aren't just massively overspraying on those uh, windows. And then I took my Milwaukee leaf blower and blew off the ceiling, blew off the walls as good as I could because there's just a ton of dust obviously after drywall mudding and taping. Um, now I am definitely not in my uniform turned inside out for painting since I'm going to get absolutely covered here um, since I won't have to launder it and it's laundered through a third party company. But uh, yeah, so here is my setup. We've got a Graco here with a whole lot of extension and a whole lot of buckets of paint. Now walking over here to her side of the garage, um, we did this last weekend already. Again, taped off windows and sprayed this thing all over. Uh, ceiling, walls, all the way down to the floor. And then again, you know, up the stairs, everything here in the garage. Now it is kind of nice not having to tape off any of the electrical stuff since it's still just got the junction boxes, the light boxes, all of that. So it is kind of nice not having to, you know, pull fixtures down, tape them off. You're just spraying at will <laughs> all over the place. Now what we're using or what we've used twice now um, to paint, we painted the previous house garage and this garage with the same stuff. And it is actually just a interior primer sealer. Um, it is not paint, it is just primer sealer, a Valspar um, PVA. Now, two years ago, these five gallon buckets were like 50 bucks a piece. They are now up to $63 a piece for the five gallon bucket. So yes, a decent amount of money here in the garage. Her side took almost 15 gallons again with ceiling walls and this one is a little bit taller and a little bit larger so we'll see how much I end up burning um, with that but yeah so I'm going to get ready to get absolutely covered in paint with overspray I don't know if I'm gonna have the camera out because it would get absolutely covered also um, one little trick that I do is leaving the concrete floor absolutely filthy, dirty, dusty because that kind of helps use or work as a paint barrier um, because, you know, as you're painting the, you know, overspray flying down to the ground, it just sits on the dirt and then you can sweep it up when you're done and it is all good. Now, when I am painting um, up against walls, I've got this uh, random piece of plywood here that I will, you know, shove up into the corner and then I can just spray as aggressively as I want to all the way to the edge and not have to worry about masking off the floor. Take your uh, piece of plywood and just slowly slide it down the wall as you are painting. Now another thing, I don't know if you guys, yeah, you can definitely notice here. Um, I am in process of tinting the windows out here in the garage. Instead of doing mini blinds or whatever, um, we are going to tint these windows. So I have never tinted car windows or house windows, but I am learning here. So I've got that window done and both of those two windows done behind me and I need to order some more material here for those windows. Um, and then walking through here, again, need to get these tinted. Now my side of the garage, the big side. Um, I have got all of my lighting installed. I've got my fan installed and I'm pretty proud of the install here. So if you guys can see, I've got light box covers that I've drilled holes in and then got my wiring hardwired to the big 
high bay lights. Now I will kick these things on and <laughs> I'm sure the uh, video is not really going to do it justice, but these things are pretty ridiculously bright. These are 14,000 looms a piece. So we've got like 84,000 looms of light here. So this should be absolutely awesome for filming at night and you know, making content since this is where I'm going to be making the majority of my content now that we actually will have a large garage again. Now up here in the center, we've got an 84 inch five blade fan just to get a little bit of air moving in this garage for the hot summer days. But yeah, we are kind of almost ready to start throwing in toolbox and all of the stuff here in the garage. I've got my uh, jack shaft style garage door openers all installed, wiring all ran, everything looking nice and tidy here. <clears throat> now jumping into the house, again, we have some electrical finally going up. We've got uh, flooring finally in, we've got our um, synthetic wood flooring. We still need to do quarter round work. Uh, we've got tile work done. We've got our little backsplashes here. We've got the shower finally all done here. So it is slowly, slowly coming along. Got to install some shutters for the first time, which was not too bad. But again, guys, we've got flooring, we've got paint on the walls, we've got paint on the trim. Now the first room that's actually kind of finally finished here is this pantry and uh, it, it's pretty cool looking. We've got adjustable shelving here. She's got a awesome light fixture. We've got a little bev fridge here for all of your quick at hand drinks. And then a little marble tile on the wall back here, which kind of is a pretty cool accent there. But guys, that's about how everything kind of looks here. We've got flooring, we're waiting on carpet, we're waiting on plumbing, we're waiting on some of the countertops here in the kitchen area, but it's slowly, slowly coming along. The big thing that's holding everything up is that driveway outside. The second that gets done, countertop people can bring in the big island, plumbing can get going. It's just the driveway is holding up absolutely everything. So guys, that is a little bit of a house update. I think she's gonna have a more in-depth update over on her channel. Um, but yeah, we're getting there. It is dragging along and I am very impatiently waiting to get in the new garage so we can start making videos with light and actual coverage from the weather. What a absolute crazy thought. Uh, so been a long process and we're not quite there yet. But guys, if you're still watching in this video, thank you so much. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you guys next time.